Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chapter 5, Lesson 4. I'm Mr. Penka. Yo, I'm Mr. Kinor. There he is. This is page 81. And now we're going from millions to billions. You know why industry has been growing. They have access to uh, financial resources, inventions, um, access to resources, workforce of immigrants and migrant workers. And now they're going from the millions to billions. This is reasons for the rise and prosperity of big business. So what is big business? Big business is where uh, these industries start to get larger and they start to uh, merge and, and uh, blend together. How would you explain what it is? Uh, that's good. The, just the, the big businesses that come out of the actual industry itself. Right. So now if you can name like a, uh, the car industry or the, uh, the steel industry, this is where you start to have the recognizable companies that are part of that. So you may have the soft drink industry, but now you know that there's the, the big businesses of uh, Coca-Cola and Pepsi. So this is where we should get like these, these name brands that now you Fago. Have. Fago, huge, a giant yes. of the industry. The mnemonic here is Cap'n, as in uh, Cap'n Crunch, or Cap'n of Industry. First, Captains of Industry. stands for Captains of Industry. This is stuff we've already said, and you just got to know it. Rockefeller for oil, Carnegie for steel, and Vanderbilt the railroad. Anything you want to say about these guys? Yeah, and I don't know if you're going to show the uh, little chart of it, but Rockefeller, Carnegie, and Steel, if you compare them to Bill Gates nowadays, take their money and move it up to this time period. Vanderbilt, Bill Gates worth 50 to 60 billion. Vanderbilt was worth Roughly two hundred billion, Carnegie worth three four hundred billion, Rockefeller worth eight hundred billion dollars, over ten times what Bill Gates is worth. So these guys, when we're comparing them to the richest people in history, Rockefeller is probably the richest guy of all time. Yep, that's uh, that's as I understand it. And these are these are men who, if you if you went through their stories, there's a lot to admire, a lot of uh, courage involved, and they. They get a kind of a double name of Captains of Industry is the nice part of it, and Robber Barons is the uh, the other side of the coin. That that's the one I like. These guys have to do some some pretty sketchy things sometimes to uh, to become the Captain of Industry. Uh, so, okay, you may look at that more in class. Now these guys create brands that people recognize. This is true for all big businesses. So right now, if I said da 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 da. You know what, a few notes, and you know what that means, oh. thanks to advertising. They have drilled that into your head. Uh, that's the idea, is you don't want to just be a part of the industry. You want your business to be the one that everyone knows. Kleenex, Q-tip. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what you call those things. They are Q-tips no. now. Give me a Kleenex. I don't care who's making it. That's what advertising does. It makes you want that brand. That's how you go from millions to billions. And you got to lower your production costs. Find a way of saving money here and there. That's how Walmart uh, and uh, Sam Walton did so well, is by managing down to the last inch of space. If Walmart tells you that your product is uh, taking up too much space and they can save money by shrinking the package, then then you'll do it. Yep. They find or ways you don't get to sell your product in Walmart. Yeah. Or if you don't want to get your price to their level. You're not going to sell yours in Walmart. So people are willing to drop their price, drop their size, do whatever they need. And that's how, that's how the captive industry uh, often uh, beat other businesses is by uh, buying up other places they need. So Vanderbilt would work with uh, steel manufacturers to lower his, his costs of uh, railroad maintenance and production. Yeah. He'd, he'd charge less for the railroad, and Carnegie would charge less for the steel. Right. So you find ways of making deals to lower your production costs. And lastly, you can make all the stuff in the world, and if you're still just selling to your city, uh, if Carnegie was just selling to Pittsburgh, at some point Pittsburgh's like, 
Hey, buddy, we uh, we're full. We, we make everything enough. out of steel now. We got enough. Our kids are eating steel for breakfast. Right, steel our, toilets are very cold. Our owls are dropping uh, steel, steel pellets. pellets. Right. It's, it's unbelievable. So you have to find a new place, and this stuff should again be very familiar to you. All that that farmer out in the middle of nowhere from the post-war changes who's buying either a uh, bear trap or a dress for himself. Right. Uh, that's okay. the national market we're talking about here. You got to find somebody else to sell to. And thanks to transportation advances like Transcontinental Railroad, you have new places to sell your stuff. Cool. Cool. Captain. Captain. Our little diagram down here, uh, the, the intention is to show you that we're going from FIG workforce goes in the hopper, hopefully so with what, no So what does that mean? Fingers. FIG workforce is uh, financial resources, what, 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 what? Financial resources, inventions. Oh, inventions, yeah. Getting access to resources and like uh, copper, lead, lead, iron ore, Q-tips, Q-tips and Kleenexes. They go in the hopper. Out come these little industries like these little small guys. <laughs> Hi there. And then they go through the process of capping, caps of industry, advertising, pressure cost lower, spit out big and out comes this raw, larger merged business of uh, oil, steel, and railroad. So that's go. a good visual there. We'll leave you with that. The left-hand page will be done in class. Yes. If at all. Happy day. Yeah. Look at all the crunch berries. Welcome aboard my Crunchateria. Today's special is... Toast, juice, milk. And my Crunchberry cereal. The very crunchy part of this balanced breakfast. Thanks, Cap. <laughs> it was your idea. <laughs>